So this is the Microsoft 365 and Adobe Creative Cloud dashboard. It shows us only the Microsoft Creative Cloud and Adobe, or excuse me, Microsoft 365 and Adobe Creative Cloud software. There are other dashboards that show other software items. But this one is actually a time series. This is a, a bad example. Um, this is in a demo instance. This is our demo 18 instance. But these charts are actually all now time series. So instead of just having a 13.3% number here, in most customer instances, they're going to have that graph behind this that tells them how it's changed over time. In the case of these Creative Cloud softwares, these three different colors represent three different things for us that are really easy to distinguish. The assigned subscriptions are essentially what is coming down from the portal in terms of their total count. How many total subscriptions have they assigned out to users? The subscriptions in use, which is the blue, tells us how many people who have been subscribed software are actually using it. Also comes from the online portals. So none of the ServiceNow calculations impact these things. The one that does impact it is the big red one. This is available subscriptions, and this is what the users have put into the system of what they've purchased. And that looks like this. Software entitlements. Again, the software entitlement is equivalent to a software purchase or what most people think of as a software license. It's your right. So you can actually put software entitlements in that were $0 value because you didn't purchase it, but you have a right to use it. So I create a new software entitlement. From here I select, it's gonna ask me for things like what model of software, obviously required because I can't purchase software for no model. It has to be for a particular model. So, so the most important parts are going to be that software model and then the right column you can see our metric group, license metric and purchase rights. These are all really the required pieces to have an entitlement. So let's do access 2010. And you'll notice that my metric group changed. It is now Microsoft because I have a Microsoft product and my license metrics have changed. So these are all the ones that Microsoft is providing us that are behind that you know, kind of black box that we can't access. What we can access more of is these common metrics that are used across publishers. So by default, if you have common, custom, and subscription, those are the things that we have visibility in. And then anything that is publisher specific, we have less visibility in. So I'll stick with Microsoft. I'm gonna say that 2010, I know is not a subscription. It's not an online product. So I'm just gonna go with per user. I purchased one of these. It's already filled in the cost for me. As soon as I save this record, it's gonna record all of my costs. And now when I perform my reconciliations, I have one more license that's available for it to count. So I, you can see here's my expense line for 139 that gets created. There's a bunch of functionality here that, that really helps in general. Now you can see contracts that are associated, users that this is assigned to, uh, all of those things are related here in this entitlement. Once I have that, I can then run a reconciliation and I won't run one today because it does take a while. Uh, run reconciliation, but this is where you come in and you can say, I want these specific publishers or these specific areas. I want you to run a reconciliation of what we own versus what we have deployed. And then you get nice outputs like, let's use the license workbench. Um, and what it's going to do is take those software models, the software entitlements, the software definitions, and there's a giant engine that it runs through. Um, and it compares all of those different things and spits out a number. So for things like um, licensing processors, there are several different products that require you to get a, uh, a value for a processor. IBM is a perfect example of this. IBM has different processor names and speeds and standards that is not just how many cores or how many um, CPUs in total do you have. So there's actually calculation that goes on behind the scenes that IBM provides that says, for these particular processors and these speeds, count this many writes. So here's our workbench. In this case, we only have 10 publishers. Most customers have several hundred publishers, up to over a thousand publishers if they're a large enterprise. I get my quick compliant versus not compliant. This is at the company level. So right now it says at Corel, I am completely compliant. In fact, I'm over licensed by $1,000. 
Uh, at Citrix, however, I have a true up cost of $1,100 and I'm over licensed by 25,000. I'm gonna dig into Adobe since it has some big numbers here. And now we're breaking down into the product and into the model. So top level was publisher, now it's product. Product is gonna be Acrobat, Creative Cloud, Fireworks, Illustrator. These are all products, but not specific versions of the product. So if I open up Acrobat, now I have those specific versions, or you might call them models, software models that I can compare against. So if I look at Acrobat 9 Professional, I can see that I have 20 user subscriptions that I've used 15 of, and I have 150 non-subscription user rights, and I've used 140 of those. So I have 10 rights here, and I have five rights here, and the system is calculated for me based on my costs, that I'm over licensed by this amount, and I'm over licensed by this amount. So now I can start to get some true cost avoidance here when it comes time to do renewals, because I can look and say, man, I am not using 10 here, and I'm not using five here, and I don't really need the buffer, so I'm not gonna renew this $500 of subscriptions, and I'm not gonna buy 150 rights for the next version of the software. I'm only gonna buy 140, or whatever the case is. And I can actually take action right from here. So let's say it were the other way around. Let's say I had 15 rights owned and I had five additional people that didn't own a right and they were unlicensed. They would actually show up here and do the unlicensed installs. I can see everywhere that it's not licensed. And then I have my remediation options. So there would actually be an additional option right here that says purchase additional rights. And if I click on it, it's going to start the procurement process for the software model to purchase the number of rights that I need. In this case, I'm not over deployed, so I don't have those options. I do have the ability to say, oh, because these 15 people weren't specifically assigned, go ahead and specifically assign it to them, but I certainly don't have to. Let's see if I can show you another example. I bet you I don't have any over deployed. But you can see here, this is worth showing, rights used by, so I can look and see everyone who is using a right by user and how many rights they're using. And that's configurable too. So if I need somebody to use more than one right, or they can have five installs and it only counts as one right, that's all configurable. But I also have this installs used. I've got 348 installs and 380 rights used and 380 subscriptions. So this is where that little bit of a disconnect comes in. The system, has kind of two ways of looking at stuff. There's the subscription software, which comes from the cloud and the portal, and we measure based on subscriptions. And then there's the desktop installations that have no cloud component, and those are gonna be installations only. In this case, because it is a subscription product, um, it actually shows us the installs for our own reference, but it's not counting the installs because the system's smart enough to know we only care about the subscriptions coming from the portal. Let's see, there's all sorts of dashboards that come with it. There's the different types of removals that you can perform. Really everything that the customer needs is in the software asset menu. And uh, the dashboards and everything that are, are set up are actually really good as long as the data is there behind them. This is the custom license metric table. And Essentially, all you get is a script. You can say whether it's a device or a user, and they give you that object, either the device or the user, and they give you the query that they're using for the installs. So between those two objects, those are the only things that are passed into the script that you can use uh, in order to determine whether this is a valid licensed install or not, or how many rights. So, because I wanted the customer to be able to update their own, and not be dependent on us to come in and, and modify scripts or to have developer knowledge to be able to do that. So I ended up building something on top for them so that they can actually come in and use a table. And that made it easier for them, but the, the baseline functionality is that we as developers can go in and write a script that says, given this computer, calculate the number of rights being used. All right, I'll take it that we covered everything then. There's no, no questions at all. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.